Thank you, Martin, and thanks for the invitation to get here. So uh, my presentation is a bit different uh, than a lot of the ones you heard today. It's uh, related to the national teams that I'm working with. Uh, just a short overview of what we're going to talk about, a bit about uh, the services that I do, and then I'm going to focus on three key development areas that I'm spending most of my time working on when I'm traveling with the teams. So about focus, roles, and communication. And mainly I'm gonna talk about focus that are also related about how to cope with adversity, pressure, and stress uh, during games, but also on the pitch. So um, this is the thing that I do uh, mostly. Uh, so the, the, the context is a bit different than from working in an academy. So I travel about 30, 35 days a year with each team meaning that that's the amount of time, let's say, with under 16 that I have to work on these specific skills. So that means maybe taking off like 10 days. Uh, so I have maybe 20 days to work on specific skills. That's not a lot of time. So for instance, being in the academy, you're able to maybe touch bases with the, uh, the players uh, each week, each day. So not a lot of time to work on these skills. So that's kind of the context. And, that's what I need to focus on as well when I'm doing the, the different sessions. Also, there's not been a, there hasn't been a culture for sports psychology in the national teams for a long time. Uh, previously, uh, different uh, practitioners getting in and not necessarily uh, the right uh, educational level. So um, a lot of my time from the beginning on was to spend on trying to uh, create a foundation for what is sports psychology. So kind of convincing the performance director as well for what is needed in sports psychology. And kind of when he was on board, I was able to get the coach on board. And after that, being able to work with high hierarchy players and the team as a whole. So a lot of things that I do is supported by the head coach and need to be supported by the head coach. So if he is not communicating, emphasizing, integrating what I do as well in the tactical talks, in his preparation and team talks as well, it makes my work really inefficient. If he didn't do that, it would be a parallel process that I would be doing related to, for instance, all the coaching. So the integration of my work with the coach is really, really important on uh, this level as well. Okay, let's uh, start out. Look a bit about what is that do with roles. Uh, so what uh, we have, uh, of course, is a lot of players that come from club level and join on the national team. They go a, lot, a lot of them go from high-ranking players in the clubs and go to not necessarily be, being that high-ranking anymore. So they have to adapt to a new role. That takes time and takes a lot of uh, thought as well from the players to adapt to a specific role that they need to fit in. So some of them have high thoughts about themselves and have uh, high hopes, expectations regarding filling in a specific role, scoring goals, whatever it is and not necessarily getting the time that they need to play or think they need to play. So I do individual talks, but also we do talks with the coach in order for the player to kind of adapt to the new role that he needs to fit in. And often the case is that they need to adapt to this specific role really, really fast. So they have a couple of days to fit in, or else there's always someone else that I able to take the place for them. So accepting the role, but also trusting each other and showing it off and off on and off the pitch are really, really important. So we spend some time on that as well. So I'm going to move on and then uh, talk a bit about communication. So communication. Um, what we focus on is uh, also inspired by social exchange theory, that what we express, what we talk about, what we spend our time on, what we communicate about, is what provides value for each of the players as well. So how we communicate specifically, or the players communicate specifically about, should provide something to other players. For instance, when you communicate, you need to provide, uh, for instance, confidence to the person next to you. You could talk about how you provide passion to the one next to you as well. But also, the way you talk provides focus, direction, or guidance, or something similar to that. So, what we do is we have a lot of individual talks regarding communication, individual pre preferences, uh, sorry, prefer preferences in communication, but also 
how is it that the, the, the groups or the lines and the team as a whole should uh, communicate when, while they're under pressure, for instance. So during the game, each uh, team are in a burst here at a certain point in the game, and they need to focus on what is it that they need to do in those specific instances communi uh, regarding communication. So how is it that each of them, and usually the high hierarchy players, are able to provide, for instance, guidance, safety, and direction in their specific communication to their teammates. We spend a lot of time trying to unfold that and communicate that, about that. So the self-awareness, uh, awareness regarding uh, how each of the players uh, go about it, but also uh, I try to provide a, a awareness regarding those specific tasks and also in communication with the coach. So trying to collaborate is uh, pretty important regarding communication. All right. So uh, that's just uh, shortly about the first two areas. I'm going to spend a bit more time regarding uh, this, ta this uh, area of our focus and the ability to cope with pressure. So um, this specific area is um, inspired by where I also work in Denmark. So um, what we try to unfold and a certain way of looking at mental toughness is uh, kind of the the idea and the foundation how to cope with pressure. So in this perspective, doubt and worry is a natural and inevitable part of the sport. Therefore, we define mental strength and toughness as the ability to act in accordance with motives and values, even when faced with difficult thoughts and feelings. So value clarification of athletes and coaches is an important part. <coughs> so in this quote, we are heavily inspired by acceptance, commitment, therapy, and mindfulness. This is also the foundation for these three steps that we teach to the players. So the first step is the ability to define your values. So each of the players should not necessarily know about their strengths and weaknesses as a player. They should know about their strengths and weaknesses as a person as well. So value clarification is about knowing who you are. So Francisco talked about it regarding identity as well, and a lot of the work being done here is about identity, the self, and that's the core uh, perspective in this first step as well. Who are you as a person? What characterizes you? What are kind of your guiding principles for how you want to behave in your life? So kind of a, a lighthouse for your actions and your behavior are the key components regarding defining your values. It's not team values, it's personal values. It's how you want to be, how you want to behave, and linked to behavior as well. We could dive even more into that, but uh, let's have a, look, uh, have a look about the, the second step of knowing your reaction patterns. A lot of what I do is uh, talking about this step as well. So self-awareness is, of course, a key component of this as well. But I want to have each of the players asking them them themselves Three simple questions. So for instance, being under pressure in the game, and we made a mistake that might have caused something a goal like that. I want them to, afterwards to be able to ask themselves these questions. Moreover, they are used to uh, 
playing at a certain level. And once they get to the national teams, they're playing at higher levels than they're used to. A lot of decisions in a short time, a lot of information in a short amount of time, decisioning, reading the game, and fine stuff that they're used to. So being calm and sticking to the plan and the position and the role is something that's really important, even though it affects your focus, the thoughts, and that might change after a bad decision or a mistake. So what I try to show them a couple of times is really what is in, within your control of your attention and what is not. What should you be focusing on? So if you spend a lot of time focusing on what is not within the, or without the control, it's the decisions on the pitch by the referee, the result, the parents, what they say and not say, scouts, agents, spectators, opponents, and stuff like that. So if you spend a lot of time and attention and focus on that, you will often get frustrated, irritated, negative, and a loss of energy. So if you spend a lot of time and your attention towards your tasks, agreements between, for instance, uh, some of the players, tactics, actually being courageous, what you're within your control, for instance, values as well, cooperation, trust, and communication provides a better energy, a better foundation for success and energy. So the third step is uh, what are you able to do? What are you able to actually dive into? What are you able to change in the moment as well? So working with yourself, and that's a process uh, we've been adapting from a lot of different sports, but something that I uh, drew into football as well. So we have to be able to register, register your thoughts. So where is your focus? After that, being able to notice your thoughts. What is it that I'm actually thinking right now? What is the specific emotions that go through the through you, the sensations? But also in this specific, or inspired by uh, act and uh, mindfulness, being able to accept that thoughts is a natural part of you. So the mind is a factory for thoughts, not just something that goes, you're able to pull away, uh, not having, it's something that you have all the time. So being able to observe what really goes on is, is key in this respect. After that, being able to release your thoughts, taking a deep breath, maybe naming the thought, here goes the doubt again. Here goes the negative thoughts once again. Observing it as something that just is part of you and being able to maybe focus on your breath if you have a second form and release the thought and emotion. And after that, refocus, great contact with what is important for you. And getting in contact with your values. Focus on the task and the necessary actions and behavior that you need to do immediately afterwards. For instance, if it's a uh, Right winger, you need to focus on the next task that you have in that specific position because that directs your, uh, your actions after that specific incident. And making the decision to move forward towards values and accepting this one, discomfort in, in the situation is something that you need to, to do as well. Okay, so I'm just going to do uh, 20 seconds of shameless self promotion because today this book is uh, released, available. So if you're really interested in this part of our acceptance commitment approaches, then uh, I think Amy from Southampton, where we are here, she wrote a chapter as well in this book, and there's some other examples from football, but also other sports, so um, read something about it if you want to. Well, I want to say thanks for your attention, and uh, I'll take questions and comments afterwards. Yeah. Okay.